What you guys got another video pc powers on but no display and the motherboard dram light is staying on now the other day i made a video on this particular motherboard here and this particular pc and uh, i couldn't get it to work the only way i could get it to work was to swap everything out so i basically took the memory out took the nvme drive out the graphics card and the power supply and everything else and put it into a new motherboard and it worked so I assumed that the motherboard was dead or I wanted to do further testing on this at a later date, i.e. try to flash the BIOS in case there was a corrupt BIOS or something like that. And that's what we're going to try and do today and see if we can get this working or whether it is a complete dead motherboard with dead RAM slots or something along those lines. So that's what we're going to try to do here. So I've got the motherboard back on the bench here and I've got everything powered on here power supply ram cpu and the graphics card here and basically i want to power it on i'll show you exactly what is actually happening to this system so when you power it on the dram light at the very top stays on it doesn't go to boot or anything like that it just stays on this particular dram light and this told me that we had some form of hardware issue and uh, we needed to try and fix it so the way I troubleshooted this was to get it down to changing out the motherboard, but I kept all of the same parts and I put them into a new motherboard and it booted straight up and we had no trouble whatsoever. So I assumed that the motherboard may be bad or the RAM slots may be bad or something like that. And that's what we come to. And I needed to do further testing, i.e. flash the BIOS. I didn't have enough time in that day to do it. So I wanted to do that today and try to see if I can rescue this board or whether it's completely dead. Because if the RAM slots are dead or components around the RAM slots are failed or something on the board has failed, then they would need to be repaired. And you can see here the DRAM light stays on. I've left this for quite a while and it just will not post. I can't get a post here and I couldn't do anything. So in that video the other day, I just left it because... I had no display and I wanted to try to flash the BIOS and I thought I'd make a second video showing you how we can flash the BIOS and whether we can get this working or whether it's completely dead. So let's go ahead and, and what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get the latest BIOS for this board because when I checked how old, the, old this board was, it's only about uh, 18 months old. I only got it about 18 months ago or something along those lines. Uh, or maybe two years uh, a push so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to get, head over to the manufacturer's website and we're going to get the latest bios for this and i'm going to try to flash the bios so here we have the motherboard manufacturer's website and this motherboard is a pretty decent motherboard and it's got some good reviews and i'm hoping that the actual board hasn't uh, died in any way where it's going to need uh, some hardware level repairs so what we're going to do here is going to go to the support page here make sure we're on windows 11 64 bit and go to bios and firmware and we're going to be looking for the latest bios updates here to see whether there is one available and i can see there's one here which i could possibly use which for 2024 and that's the 12th and 16th. i never really updated the bios to this version so i know i could use this version to basically flash the bios on the board and hopefully that rectifies the problem and it and it can actually be something wrong with the bios there's quite a few things that can cause the dram and that is uh you know the power supply the memory the motherboard slots uh you know your bios and a bunch of other stuff as well so we've got the file downloaded here and I've got it into a folder here. I'm going to extract these and what we need to do is double click on the rename uh, file and basically what this will do is it will rename the BIOS uh, file to uh, what it needs to be renamed to. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the actual uh, USB flash drive plugged into my computer here and I'm going to format this to FAT32. So I'm going to right click on it click on format here and you can see file system it needs to be fat 32 to allow us to flash the bios i'm just going to call it say bios you don't have to rename it but let's go ahead and rename it bios and click start and do a quick format of that drive all the data on the drive will be erased 
and that is now done. So now we can copy the files over to our actual USB flash drive. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click on these two files and copy them over. Now, one of the files is the actual BIOS file. The other one is a renaming tool that you can use to rename the actual file. When you click on it right here, you can see it's going to rename it to uh, the long file name to another file name and .cap, as you can see here. Now, it doesn't look like it's actually worked, but it has. I just need to refresh the actual box that it's in here. So we just need to refresh this right here. So I'm going to right click on it and go refresh. And this will change the contents inside. And you can see it's been renamed. So that's good. If you can't see the extension, just go to the three dots here and then go to view. And then you can show hidden files, folders and drives and remove the check mark from hide extensions. And you should now see dot cap is there for this particular file. So that is the actual BIOS file that we need. So we're now finished with this and we can take this over to the computer's motherboard and we can then plug it into the designated spot which says BIOS on the back of it right here. And you can see I'm just going to insert it into that USB port with BIOS on it because that is the USB port that we're going to use to flash our BIOS. Now I've already got power to the motherboard. I've got a power supply that's going to the 24 pin and the CPU pin header on the board. And we've also got a little flash button here to flash this. The CPU is in the motherboard. You don't necessarily need to have the CPU in there. Uh, and I've got RAM and I've got a graphics card in there as well. Although you don't need these items in the actual motherboard to flash the BIOS. But you could see the green light going here. When I push this button here, you'll see a little green light starting to flash around the actual Wi-Fi antenna. You can just see it through there. And that is the signal that it's telling us that it is actually flashing the BIOS. So you do not want to turn the computer off at this stage, and you do not want to pull out the USB flash drive. You've got to wait until it completely finishes its job. If you try to do that during the flashing of the BIOS, it can brick your motherboard, so you've got to be careful. So it says fast, faster flashing light means it's nearly done. So you can see it now speeding up a little bit. And once that's now gone off, which it has, that means the job has been completed and you can now safely remove the USB flash drive. Just give it a little bit longer than what it's needed just to make sure the flashing process has been completed. Otherwise, you can end up bricking your motherboard if you pull it out at the wrong time. So I know it's finished, so I'm going to pull this out. And what we're going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and we can now test. So I want to quickly go through and answer some of the questions that I see in the comments section of my video where I was trying to fix it and there was the DRAM light permanently on. Some people were saying the RAM was bad. I've tested the RAM. The RAM is perfectly fine. Some people were saying the connectors on the RAM uh, needed to be cleaned and these were already cleaned with contact cleaner and they were cleaned off. Also the channels inside the memory slots were cleaned out with contact cleaner as well. That was another concern with some people. Some people were saying the BIOS battery is dead. The BIOS battery was working perfectly fine. I've cleaned all these slots right here. These are all working perfectly fine. Again, I've tried uh, to use a different motherboard and that worked perfectly fine. It did boot up. I used the same parts apart from the motherboard and it worked. So it's even the motherboard that is fouled or the RAM slots have fouled or some chips around there the RAM slots have let go or something like that. I did use a clean new power supply for those people saying it's bad power. I used the new power supply and also used the original power supply and they both work. But you can see I've got a new power supply on this system and it's still not working. So I've tried all those things. Even the CMOS battery, I changed the CMOS battery just to see whether it was that and checked the CMOS battery. The CMOS battery had plenty of power in it. It had uh, good power in the actual original one because there was nothing wrong with it. So... The only problem with this board now is it's either a bad BIOS, which we've just flashed, or it's either bad slots on the board or some sort of bad component on the board that's let go. Maybe the power delivery for the memory, something like that. This is the board I used in my diagnosis test. I put everything on this board and it worked perfectly fine. So we know all the components are working correctly. It's just the fact 
that this wasn't working correctly. But you can now see the sequence lights have changed because I've put the GPU down in the bottom slot. And I also put one RAM stick in on the first slot and I cleared the CMOS because we've had have flashed the uh, BIOS with a new BIOS flash. And when it come up with a little bit of display there, it did say the BIOS was updating and it's done. So we're now lucky that we do have some form of sequence lights going through the LEDs to the boot uh, light there. And you can now see we are getting a post screen, which is pretty good. So once we push F1 here, I'm just going to put in a keyboard here, push F1, and hopefully we will be able to get into the BIOS, which means it was a bad BIOS. Uh, so the BIOS must have got corrupted in some way and it didn't like it and it just stuck on the DRAM light, which is a common problem uh, for some motherboards. And there's also loads of other things that can go wrong with these. Some people were talking about overclocking. I wasn't overclocking the CPU, so it's nothing to do with that. And you can see we are now in the BIOS. I've now swapped around the GPU into its main slot, as I'll show you in a second. So we're just going to go down to the motherboard here and you should be able to see. Let me put the light back on here. And you can see the, now the GPU is back in its main slot and we are still uh, getting to the BIOS. And what I want to do now is I want to put the drive back in because we don't have an uh, NVMe drive in there yet. So I'm going to put the original drive back in and put the other RAM stick back into its slot just to confirm that everything is working perfectly fine and it was a bad BIOS at this stage. So I'm hoping that everything works okay when I put this other RAM stick back in. And yes, we are using a different power supply, but it was nothing to do with the power supply. I'm pretty sure it was to do with the BIOS now. And we're just going to put the original drive back in here and hopefully get this thing booted back up. It needs a good clean and put it back into all of its case because this is a work machine at the end of the day. That's what it's designed to do. And I want to get it back up and running. If it didn't work today and the motherboard would failed, I would have just gone and bought a brand new motherboard chip and RAM and just probably bought a new case and, and probably done another build. But that's just the way it is. And hopefully now this has saved me a few pound and I don't have to go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and get this drive back in here. And then we can test it to see whether it boots the windows on the same drive that we had. And if you're asking why the BIOS happened to go bad like that and fell over, I really don't know. Uh, it's a PC at the end of the day. There's lots of reasons why things happen. And for some reason, it decided to just break and it just wouldn't boot and it was stuck on the DRAM light. I've had things like this before where the CPU light stuck on and I've had it where other lights have been stuck on, your VGA lights and things like that. It's just PCs at the end of the day. And uh, you've just got to really exhaustively test everything. And it does take quite a while. And again, I, I went down a swapping out route for a video thinking it would be good for a video but if i was doing this for a living i'd have done a completely different approach to it compared to what i'm doing right here this is just for video content and trying to save my pc at the end of the day but you can see right here uh we don't have we do have a splash screen now and we do have that windows logo actually spinning around so it does look like it was a bad bios at the end of the day which is a really good result and to be honest, I wasn't willing to give up so easily on that board because I know that board was quite an expensive board and also it was quite a new board. And for something to fail on it like that, it can happen. But I just knew that it was probably going to be my last ditched hope was to flash the BIOS. And I wanted to do that separately in another video. And I tell people this all the time. It really doesn't matter. The problem has been fixed. And it doesn't matter what way you go about fixing PCs. Everyone's going to have their own methods of fixing PCs. And you can dissect it and watch other people on YouTube and say your stuff in the comments section. And really, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. As long as the problem's fixed, it doesn't matter what way you approach it. People forget that when you're making content, uh, you're just going around it in a different way. But if you're doing this as a living and trying to fix PCs for a living, you're obviously not thinking about 
uh, filming everything and you're not thinking about having a tripod in your way, you're just going to go ahead and get it fixed. Anyway, that's going to be about it. Uh, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you uh, or some sort of entertainment. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. We managed to get it fixed and save another motherboard from the e-waste bin. And I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.